So we'll start here in line 402, and we can start with this exclamation, heu, which means something like alas. Um, and then in the next sentence, fas, this word fas is short for fas est in a way, um, meaning it is right, uh, it is lawful, it is permitted by the gods, that kind of thing. Um, and going with that is nihil. Um, which is a very strong way of saying known. So nihil fas is like saying known fas est. It is not right. Um, it is not at all right. And that's then followed by an accusative and infinitive. The accusative is quem quem, and the infinitive is fidere. So it is not at all right for anyone, quem quem, to rely on, that's fidere, um, and this then takes dative, fido fidere, to, to rely on. So it is not at all right for anyone to rely on the diwis, the gods. Um, diwus is just like deus, basically. So to rely on the gods inuitis, reluctant, or against their will. Um, so this adjective often confuses people because in Latin in vito means I invite somebody but then in vitus as an adjective um, means reluctant or against someone's will um, so just bear that in mind uh, also the fact that there's a u in this text in the middle of in vitis that could be written as a v doesn't make any difference um, so it is not at all right for anyone to rely on the gods against their will. So clearly the gods act in a way that is different here from what the Trojans want them to do. Um, and then we have another of these exclamatory words, eke, so look or behold. And then um, the subject is Virgo, the maiden. And then we get her name here, Cassandra. And then she's described as Priameia. Now, this is the adjective form of the name Priam. So, literally, the Priamean maiden Cassandra. And Priameia here just tells us that she's the daughter of Priam, basically. So, if you're being super literal, you could say the Priamean maiden Cassandra, or a little bit less literally, the maiden Cassandra, Priam's daughter. And then the main verb is trahebatur. Now, this is from traho to drag. You can tell from the ba in the middle that it's imperfect tense. And then you can tell from the tour at the end that it's passive. So she was being dragged. And then we have an ablative phrase, passis crinibus, right? Now, crinibus are hairs, right? Crinis is a hair. And passis... Um, is a PPP, it means having been spread out. So we might say streaming hair, right? Passis crinibus with streaming hair. Um, she was being dragged out, ar templo, from the temple, ar plus ablative, and quer, from the sanctuary, aditis. This is another ablative. Um, grammatically, it's plural, but we can translate it as singular. Um, so from the temple and sanctuary of Minerva, so minervai is the genitive case of Minerva, as in the goddess. Um, so just to quickly go through that bit again, look, the maiden Cassandra, Priam's daughter, was being dragged with streaming hair from the temple and sanctuary of Minerva. And then we have a present participle, tendens, which you can tell from the ns at the end. So tendens means... Um, lifting, ad kailum, ad plus accusative, so lifting to heaven, lifting to heaven, her, and then the object is ardentia lumina. Now ardentia, you can tell from the nt in the middle, means burning or blazing, uh, or rather you can tell that it's present participle from the nt and it means burning or blazing, and then lumina are eyes, Right now, the normal word for eye is oculus, but in poetry you can also use the noun lumen, which means light. That can also be used to mean an eye. 
So lifting to heaven her blazing eyes, and then frustra is a is an adverb which means in vain, unsuccessfully. So lifting to heaven her blazing eyes in vain, and then the lumina is repeated, right? Her eyes. So we're being we're getting a clarification here. We're being told why she's only lifting her eyes rather than other parts of her body, right? She was lifting her eyes because nam or you can translate that as for, um, bonds, vincula, right? Um, so bonds were confining, archebant, right? the BA in there tells you it's imperfect tense, for bonds were confining, and then the object is teneras palmas, her tender hands, um, literally her tender palms, but that word palm can be used in a more general sense to mean hands. Okay, so lifting to heaven her blazing eyes in vain, her eyes for bonds were confining her tender hands. Uh, so she's been tied up, basically. So the only part of her that she can raise up to the sky um, to beg the gods is just her eyes. Um, then we go into a new sentence here. So we can start here, I think, with this ablative phrase, furiata mente. So furiata, this is our perfect participle. Um, it means sort of maddened uh, or inflamed in a way. And then mente is the ablative of mains, meaning a mind. So with maddened mind, ablative case. Coroibus, he's our subject, right? Remember, he's one of Aeneas's Trojan friends. Coroibus, known to it, right? Now, literally, this means did not carry, but but the verb ferro that this comes from also has a more metaphorical meaning as well as carry, which is sort of bear or endure something. So Coroibus could not bear, and then the object is Hank Speciem. Okay, so could not bear this sight. And et, there, he in yaket, he threw, right, in, so we've seen that verb yakio before, to throw, and this is that same verb, but with in stuck on the front. So he threw, and the object is say say, which is just the same as say, it's the reflexive pronoun. So he flung himself, um, and then here you've got, with perituros, you've got a future participle. And you can tell that it's a future participle because it has the letters U, R in the middle, just like the word future itself. So, flung himself, being about to die, being about to perish, right? Future participle of pereo. Um, you might, if you want to be a bit grander, you might say doomed to die. So, he flung himself, doomed to die, into, that's in plus accusative, the medium agmen, into the middle of the throng, the middle of the crowd. Agmen sometimes means a battle line, but here I think that that's a bit too kind of specific. I think here we're dealing with a slightly more chaotic uh, situation, so it's more like a crowd or a throng or a mass of people, something like that. Um, okay, going into the next phrase then. Cuncti means all, um, everyone. It's just like omnes. Uh, and here, because the verb is first person plural, mur, um, it means we all, right? So we all, consequimur, we all follow. This is a deponent verb, so it looks passive, but it has an active meaning. We all follow, and we incurrimus, we attack, and then we have an ablative phrase, densis armies, with dense weapons, or with close-packed weapons. Okay. And then we can go into line 410. So hic here with a long I means here. Um, and then primum means first. And then X plus ablative means from or out of. So from the alto culmine, from the high roof. And then de lubri is genitive case. So from the high roof of the sanctuary. 
Um, and then in the next line, we have the main verb, obruimo, we are overwhelmed, right? So it's first person plural and it's passive. So we are overwhelmed. And when you get a passive, you're often expecting it to go with an ablative, right? And the ablative is telis. Um, so we are overwhelmed by the weapons nostrorum. Now nostrorum is genitive plural, meaning of our, and we have to supply the noun, so of our friends, essentially, of the people on our side. So what you have here is a situation where Aeneas and his Trojan friends are being attacked by, you know, weapons and things being thrown down at them from above by their own fellow Trojans. So you've got Trojans being killed by Trojans. Why? Because Aeneas and his friends are disguised as Greeks. So that's causing confusion. And it's causing Trojans to kill other Trojans, thinking that they're Greeks. Okay, so we're overwhelmed by the weapons of our friends. And, queer, and then we've got this superlative adjective, miserima, uh, a very wretched kaides, slaughter. Uh, which is feminine, as you can tell from the feminine ending of miserima, right? So a very wretched slaughter, oritur, arises. Uh, this is another deponent verb, so looks pack passive but has an active meaning. Um, right, so very wretched slaughter arises. Uh, and then you've got an ablative here, facie, from the appearance, armorum, of our weapons. Right, so the appearance of the weapons, the fact that they look Greek, um, is what is causing this confusion, uh, this chaos. So a very wretched slaughter arises from the appearance of our weapons and from the errore, that's another ablative singular noun, from the confusion, um, literally the error, of the, so now we have genitive plural, of the griarum yuvarum, of the Greek crests. So there's a lot of confusion happening here. Uh, okay, going into line 413, tum danai, then the Danaeans, and remember they are the Greeks. Okay, so then the Danaeans, and then you've got an ablative noun, gemitu, with a moan, and que, uh, at que, and then another ablative at the end of the line, ira, with anger, and now let's be really literal for a moment here. Anger of the having been snatched away maiden. So a repti is a PPP, perfect passive participle. And it's genitive agreeing with weirginis. So literally of the having been snatched away maiden. Now here snatched away basically means rescued because she's a Trojan who's been rescued by other Trojans. So a more natural translation would be something like um, with a moan and with anger at the rescued maiden. Something like that. Um, or you could even say anger at the rescue of the maiden. But if we're being super literal, anger of the having been snatched away maiden. Um, okay, so the subject is the Danaeans. They're very angry. And so, collecti, another PPP, having been gathered together, undique, from every side, they attack in wadunt, they attack. Um, and then we're told a little bit about who these Danaeans are. So you have the superlative adjective acerimus, most fierce, uh, Ajax. His name in Latin is Ajax, but in English we call him Ajax, most fierce Ajax. And at the Gemini um, Atridae, right? Gemini means twin, uh, as we saw before with the snakes. And the Atridae are the sons of Atreus. This is again a linguistic feature called a patronymic, which is where you refer to somebody as son of someone. So Atrides means son of Atreus. Um, so, most fierce Ajax and the twin sons of Atreus, the two sons of Atreus, and, queer, 
the omnis exercitus, the whole army, of the Dolopians. So Dolopum is genitive plural, and so it means of the Dolopians, who are a group of Greeks who are there in Troy fighting this war. So just to go through again that last phrase, uh, most fierce Ajax and the two sons of Atreus and the whole army of the Dolopians.